9 with me. Mark chapter 9. It's, it's been said many times that God is never late. He's always on time, and I believe that. But I also believe he hardly ever shows up early. <laughs> he almost never gets there before the last minute. He waits until all human effort, all human uh, will is, is diminished, and then he shows himself strong. Mark chapter 9, beginning with verse 17, it says, And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit, and wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnashes with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples, that they should cast him out, and they could not. Verse 21, and he asked his father, Jesus asked his father, how long? Oh, there it is. How long is it ago since this came unto him? And the father said, of a child. Let's stop and pray for a moment. Father, we thank you this morning for the engrafted word that is able to save the soul. I would ask you, Master, that you would give me a focus of speech, focus of mind, that I might make a clear sound before your people, and that hope might be inspired. Lord, if there's one that has cast away their confidence, if there's one that is waning in their faith, oh God, let us today, through this hearing of this word, let that faith be re-energized in their spirit. And Father, I pray for the offering that we're receiving through the course of this service and after the service I ask you that you bless those that support this ministry bless those that give to this ministry Lord that we might propagate the gospel across the world father we ask it in Jesus name and we thank you for it amen and amen so we find here a father he's a Jew a full-blooded Jew in the culture of that day when the Jewish uh, people, when they were children, their parents taught them how to pray. We should do that today. There were no Jewish people that did not know how to call on God. They were taught as children. It was part of their curriculum in, in the school that they went to. They had to learn to pray. So this man grew up, but he knew how to pray. And no doubt over the course of uh, his son's life, who we see in uh, verse 21, Jesus asked the father, how long ago is it since this situation came upon this young man? And the father said, of a child. Now that lets you know that it started, this, these convulsions that he was having, this inability, uh, this dumb spirit. It started when he was a child, but because the father said it started as a child, that means the boy, he's no longer a child. This has gone on for years, perhaps longer than a decade. It's gone on and on, and the father knew how to pray. No doubt he had been on his knees many times petitioning God for his son. You know his heart was breaking because he came to Jesus. Jesus asked, how long? And I think this morning Jesus would ask you and I, how long have you been praying about that thing? How many times have you been on your knees going before God and praying about that thing? The father tells him, he answers the question, it's been this way since this boy was a, since he was a little child, it's been this way. And in verse, uh, the next verse, I believe it's 22, um, it goes on to say, and oft times, the father's speaking, oft times, it has cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto the Father, if thou canst believe. The Father said to Jesus, if you can do anything. And Jesus said back to the Father, if thou canst believe. Now, I have to, the way I interpret this, the way I read this, what Jesus is really insinuating after this uh, years and years of you praying and this child not get, receiving the answer that you desired, he's asking the Father, can you still believe after everything you've been through, after all the convulsions that you've seen, after all the prayers that you prayed, can you still believe? 
You see, there's one acid test for your faith. It's time. Time. Time can, if we allow it, it doesn't have to, time can diminish your faith. I remember when we moved out of the storefront years ago, when the Lord blessed us and we built the small front end of that building. And um, we were so happy. We were overjoyed. I mean, we were saving uh, literally our change in a jar, trying to put the money together to build that first building. And the week that we moved into that building, the Lord spoke to me. And he said, you are going to build another church during your ministry. And it was so real. I, I thought it was going to be like the next month. I I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> it was 15 years before we broke ground and laid another. And over the course of that time, Satan can come and even your own thoughts, you can battle in your mind. Is this the will of God? Did I really hear God? Should I be asking for this? All of these thoughts can come to your mind. But this morning, Jesus is asking you, can you still believe? See, don't throw away your hope. It's all you got. Don't throw away your confidence in Jesus Christ. It's all you got. See, you, you, you can't go ask the devil for it. <laughs> You can't go ask the politicians for it. You're going to have to keep your faith centered up on Jesus Christ because he sometimes will take a long time because he's building in you a, a quality, an attribute called patience. Called patience. If we get everything that we want from God, that we feel that we need from God the very next day, we would have no patience at all. We wouldn't know what it is to build, to trust him through the years. Here's something you have to understand. The goal is not getting at the destination of your prayer. That's not the goal. The goal is maintaining your faith until you get to the destination. That's the victory right there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just because you got what you prayed for, that's wonderful. Nothing wrong with that. But that wasn't the goal. The goal was you maintaining strong faith in the fact that God hears your prayer and that God answers prayer through the course till you get to that destination. Can you still believe? The father said, Lord, if you can't do anything, he's talking to God in the flesh. He's talking to God incarnate. If, if, you, if you have the ability to do anything, and Jesus said right back to him, if you can still believe. You see, we, we in the West, we, we think that God is like uh, McDonald's. Where you put your order in <laughs> and you get your happy meal out. <laughs> God can, he can give you every desire of your heart right now. But that's not how he builds patience in us. Patience is a fruit of the spirit. It is an attribute of the personality of Jesus Christ. And you cannot be Christ-like if he does not build patience within you. And so when you pray that prayer, when you're asking God and over and over again, you've gone back. I've got things I prayed for well over 10 years. Saying, God, what about this? What about that? And sometimes it seems like God is fixing everything else except this thing that I'm praying about. How many know what I'm talking about? We have to just admit it as Christians. We don't just name it and claim it. That's a lie. You, you don't just blab it and grab it and it's all done and God has answered every prayer. No, no, no. That's not the truth. Sometimes God allows us to suffer long. Because he wants to build patience within our lives. He's always done it. We, that when we read the miracles in the Bible, sometimes we read past the words and just get to the destination. Oh, praise God, he healed them. And we don't realize to stop to think what that person went through trying to get to the destination. In Romans chapter 4, I want to share with you the father of faith, the story of the father of faith. He didn't cast away his confidence. And the scripture tells us in Hebrews, don't cast away your confidence. Even though it takes a long time, hold fast to your profession of faith. Hold on to it. Don't let the devil take it from you. 
But in Hebrews it says, concerning Abraham, being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. Let me, let me explain what's happened. God gave Abraham a promise. He said, your seed, while he had no children, he said, your seed will be as the stars of heaven and as the sand on the sea. And Abraham didn't even have a, a, a boy. He didn't even have a baby at all. And on top of that, his wife, Sarah, she never had a baby when she was 18. Now she's getting up in age. And God gives him this amazing promise. And Abraham made a lot of mistakes. He, he ventured down into Egypt. He had the affair with, with Hagar. He produced an Ishmael. He made a lot of mistakes. But the Bible said he did not stagger at the promise of God. In other words, through everything that he went through, he held on, God, you told me, and I'm holding on to it. He didn't cast away his confidence. And he's, he's written about here in Hebrews, being not weak in faith. When, when time can diminish your faith, it means your faith was weak. And, and if you're in that situation, just, just gird up the loins of your mind. I say, God, I, I may have made some mistakes, but I still believe it. And I'm right back here again. I'm going to ask you again and again and again and again. As long as it takes, I'm going to ask you for this thing. And understand that no, as an answer, is legitimate. Do I need to talk about that? Just because you want it and ask for it, sometimes the answer is no. Because no is best for you. When Jesus went to the Father and said, Lord, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from me, the answer came back. It didn't come back, but it's obvious. No, the cup cannot pass for you from you. There is no other way. It's got to happen this way. And if Jesus can get a no in prayer, <laughs> how about you and me? But, but regardless of what the answer is, that answer will come back. If you can still believe, if you can continue to put your trust in God. And let me say this, if you've stopped praying about it, it's because your faith is weak. If time has diminished how often you go to the Lord to ask him for that thing that, that you need, that you require, that you need to have written in your life, it's because your faith is being diminished by the passing of time. Being not weak in faith, Abraham considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. Now get this, what he's saying. Abraham waited for 25 years. He carried the promise of God for two and a half decades. How long have you been waiting? Two and a half to 25 years he carried this. And through the course of it, when he was, I believe he was 100 years old, he didn't stagger at the promise of God. The scripture says he considered not his own body, now dead, meaning that he was too old to make babies. Neither the deadness of Sarah's womb, she was too old to make babies. And neither one of them together, they weren't making babies when they was 19. <laughs> The scripture says he refused to consider all of that, but he believed the promise. He believed the word of God. Saints, this is where God's trying to take all of us to a place that Father Abraham was. It goes on to say, it goes on to say, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but rather was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded Fully persuaded, no, no matter that it took 25 years, no matter that it seemed like everything was happening that, uh, uh, wrong concerning Hagar and Ishmael, he waited 25 years, but he staggered not, being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was also able, he was also able to perform. Saints, are you holding on to your faith? I, I'm going to ask it, can you still believe? I mean, that thing that you've cried for God, when it first started breaking out, you may have spent time in prayer with hot tears running down your face, but now the tears have dried. And the zeal to get that thing accomplished may have begin to wane. Can you still believe? Can you still muster up some faith in your heart? I believe it was, it was Joshua. He came back as one of the spies 
that spied out the land and he told Moses, we're well able to take this land. But the rest of them, they, they waned on him. And it was 40 years later that Joshua stood before the very same mountain. And he said, it's been 40 years, but I still believe that we are well able to take this. Can you still believe? God doesn't require much of you and I. Not much at all. But he told us plainly that without faith, it's impossible to please God. He told us that he that cometh to God must believe, must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And this morning concerning the, the issues in your life that you prayed about, can you still believe? John chapter, I'm sorry, uh, Mark chapter 5. These are one of the two stories that I'm going to share with you this morning that sometimes we read past and we don't realize the anguish that, that those who received the promise of God, the anguish that, we went, that they went through. And concerning Abraham, just quickly, 25 years to get the promise, and then after he got the promise and, and, and Isaac was born, God said, now take him up to the Moriah and sacrifice him. <laughs> if you can't make the 25 years to get the promise, you can't go on to Abraham faith. Can you still believe? Mark chapter 5, verse 25 says, And a certain woman, again, let's stop. She is a Jewish woman. She learned to pray as a little girl. She was taught by her parents how to pray. There can be no doubt that she had prayed about this situation Many, many times. A certain woman which had an issue of blood. Twelve days. Twelve months. Do you see that? Well over a decade. Now an issue of blood, that means that impacts a woman. You, you're in a weakened condition, a weakened physical condition. Not only that, there's a stigma attached to it. But I want to show you this woman maintained her faith the whole time. No doubt in that 12 years, she had prayed many times concerning this. How could she not? How could she not? But her faith, she held on to God. She held on to the promise that God is a God that healed. Jehovah, the Lord that healeth thee. She held on to it. And it says here that she had an issue of blood 12 years. Now look what she's been through. She suffered many things from many physicians. Let's break it down. Let's break it down. Each physician that she had been to put her through many things. And then on top of that, she went to many different physicians. So she's been dogged out by Big Pharma. <laughs> and she spent all that she had. She had bankrupted herself looking for a solution to this. And then in addition, she didn't get any better. <laughs> it was getting worse. Do you see that? See, sometimes we just read past the details getting to the destination, but I want us to slow down and let's look at the journey that she's been through. Twelve years with an issue of blood, been to every doctor. Every doctor took advantage of her. She spent all her money on these doctors taking advantage of her. And the situation is getting worse and worse and worse. And I wonder if Jesus had to ask her, can you still believe? You see, she, she had this issue of blood. And again, there's a stigma attached to that in the culture of that day. She was not even supposed to be in the presence of a rabbi in that condition. She, she, could, she was putting her very life in jeopardy just being in the presence of a rabbi. But something down on the inside, <laughs> something down on the inside compelled her. Can you still believe this morning? It says that she was nothing better but rather grew worse. But when she heard of Jesus... She came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall, shall be whole. Now listen, there's no scripture for her. There's no scripture that says just touch the hem of his clothes. She made that up. 
<laughs> she made that up and said, listen, I'm just going to reach out. I know I shouldn't be here. I know the crowds would stone me. I know I'm out of order, but I believe in my heart that if I could, if I could just touch, not him, just his clothes, I'm going to be made whole. God's just looking for faith. He's looking for the sincere cry of your heart. Not something high and mighty, not, not something that's very eloquent, just the sincere cry of a hungry heart. That's all he's looking for. Can you still believe? And straightway, <laughs> and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she, had, that she was healed of that plague. Twelve years. Now the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit cracks me up the way that he writes sometimes the scripture because he says in this last phrase I just read she she touched the hem of his garment saying I would be made whole and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up the word straightway means immediately the Holy Spirit says immediately the issue was dried up <laughs> Lord what do you mean immediately it's been 12 years <laughs> but just that sincere cry of the heart and not being willing to allow your faith to be dissipated over the passage of time. She held on to God from the, first, from the first year through the second, third, fourth, all the way to the twelfth year. She's still holding on. She said within herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. Where are you this morning? Where are you in your faith walk concerning that thing that you've been asking God for? It, maybe it's not been 12 months or 12 years. Maybe it's only been 12 months. Where are you at? Maybe it's been 24 years. Where are you at this morning? And the question I, I keep hearing ringing in my spirit, can you still believe? Here's another one that we find in the book of John. John chapter 5. Beginning with verse 5, it says, And there was a, a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years. That's older than some of you have been alive. This man, had, a Jewish man, you know he's praying about it. You, you know he's praying about it. Listen, if you've got a situation and you stop praying about it, it means that you've cast away your confidence. Tell that devil he's a lie and go back to the throne of grace. God told us in Hebrews, come boldly to the throne of grace and cry out for mercy and help in the time of need. That's our right as a Christian, as a born again Christian. You have a right to go straight to his throne and do it again and again and again. Do, do you remember the parable Jesus gave of the unjust judge? The woman kept going to the judge saying, I, I want to be released from my debtors. And every day she'd knock on that judge's door and he would say, go away, woman. I don't want anything to do with this. And she would go home and come right back the next day and come back the next day. And that's what God wants us to do. Come back again and again and again. Say, I'm not, I'm not dissuaded. I'm not discouraged. I'm going to be here every single day. And finally, the unjust judge says, listen, I have no regard for God. I have no regard for man. Man, but this little woman is driving me crazy, being in my door every single day. And Jesus said, hear what the unjust judge said. If an unjust judge will finally uh, give in to this woman because of her uh, continually coming, how much more will a righteous judge, a righteous God, answer the prayers of those who cry out day and night? But you got to cry out day and night. See, if you walk away, it's like the rich young ruler. He just walked away. When he came to Jesus, he, 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 won, he wanted eternal life. What must, good thing must I do to inherit eternal life? But, but when he walked away, Jesus didn't say, hey, whoa, whoa, come back. Oh, come on, we'll negotiate. No, if you walk away, he'll let you walk away. Because he knows you're going to have to come back this way anyway. Because <laughs> every other path is a dead end. Every other path, it ends in bad news. A certain man was there, had an infirmity 38 years, and when Jesus saw him lying, knew that he had been a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? And the impotent man answered, Sir, I have no man 
When the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. And, and so the situation here was it was at the pool that uh, the, the custom was that uh, the first one, the angel will come down and trouble the water, and the first one to step in will get their healing. And the way John is handling this in his, uh, in his passage, it's not a myth. It, it's really happening. People are getting healed. And so this man is standing there, and eternal life incarnate walks past him and says, Wilt thou be made whole? And he had lost all hope. He, he had lost all, all hope in God. He said, I have no man to put me in the water. See, if you cast away your confidence, you're going to start looking to man to meet your need. And man, let's just be honest, can't meet his own need. <laughs> the be Listen, I can't do nothing for you. If you cast away your confidence, all, I can lay hands on you all day long. God is not going to answer because I'm praying for you. He's going to answer because your faith is in God and his ability to meet your need. If thou canst still believe, can you hold on to that faith? Sir, I have no man. He look in the wrong direction. <laughs> when the water is troubled to put me in the pool, but while I'm coming, another step it down before me. Jesus said unto him, rise up, take up your bed and walk. And immediately, there that word is again, immediately the man was made whole, took up his bed and walked. After 38 years. Saints, there are, there are men, see, Here's the thing, as, as we get older, um, we have experiences with God. And, and we don't like to talk about all the experiences, all the things we prayed about that we're still praying about. I, there, I got saved at 28. There's things in my 30s I was praying about. I'm still praying about them same things right now. And we don't like to talk about that because oftentimes it makes us look like we're showing God in a negative light, but we're not. What he's doing over the course of that time that you're praying about that thing, he is putting patience in your life. See, then I would ball back in the 30s, ball and squall and hot tears running down my face. Oh, God, I don't do that today. I don't do that today. Today I come to my father and say, Father, I've been asking you for this thing. It, it's on my heart. And, and I want this thing accomplished in my life. And I love you and I know that you love me. And God, in your time, what is the right time for me? I will wait on you. There's a degree of maturity that I've learned through, through the years. But you can't make God do anything. But you have to understand God does all things well. <laughs> I remember as a, as a young Christian asking, seeking God for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The evidence of speaking in other tongues. And I'd go to the altar every single service, including Wednesday night. I'd go to the altar. And I'm crying and the saints would lay hands on me. And, and I, I'd call out to God. And no baptism. Week after week. Month after month. It was about seven months later, but I didn't cast away my confidence. I was at home by myself with nobody to lay hands on me. And I'm praying, oh God, I want the Holy Ghost. Lord, I ask you for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And as I'm praying, I'm noticing my words keep drifting off. And I didn't know, so I just pulled them back and kept asking for it. <laughs> and they kept drifting off. I didn't know what was up. So I went to church that night like I always did. And I went to the altar seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the words kept drifting off. But then I had an experienced saint there that was with me. He said, Brother Lincoln, you got it. That's it. <clears throat> the thing is, don't cast away your confidence. Hold on, to, hold on to your hope. Hold on to your faith. Jesus will answer it in due time. Let me share just one more scripture with you very quickly. James chapter 1. Uh, he says this. My brethren, <laughs> oddly enough, Count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. How do you do that? How do you count it joy when, when, when you're in a fiery trial? How do, you, how do you count that joy? He tells us by knowing this, by knowing this, 
that the trying, the testing of your faith, and that's what the long time is between when you started praying and the thing actually come. That's the trying, the testing of your faith. You need to know this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work so that you might be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. There's only one way you and I can be Christ-like. We're going to have to be like Christ. <laughs> Meaning that his personality has to be developed in our being. The fruit of the Spirit that we read of in Galatians 5.22 is a description of the personality of Jesus Christ. And we go through all that we go through so that he can develop those things within us. Have you ever just been asking God for something and it's so long you're almost like, you're, you're almost getting impatient with the Lord? Come on, be honest. <laughs> you're almost like impatient. And then finally when God does the thing that you ask him, you're embarrassed that you were almost impatient. <laughs> Don't cast away your confidence. God does all things well and he knows how long to wait for you in your situation. The way I got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, taking seven months of crying out, I learned so much during that journey. I was a young Christian, just, just, just got saved, as a matter of fact. It was, it was seven months since I'd gotten saved that I, I received the baptism. And it seems like, oh, I waited so long. But now it's been, I don't know, 36 years that I've had the baptism. It makes the seven months I waited like nothing. <laughs> Don't cast away your confidence. Ask yourself right now that thing that you've been praying about, that thing you've been seeking God for. Just ask within your own heart, ask yourself, can I still believe? Can I still have a fervent faith to believe God for this thing, though it's been low these many months or many years? Can I still believe? Would you bow your heads, please, all over the room this morning? Father, we thank you so much for your grace. We thank you so much for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that you do things well, even though we might not agree. <laughs> we thank you, Lord, that you take your time. You're in no rush, and we should be in no rush. But God, help us through the course of our waiting upon the Lord that our patience might be built, that our faith in you might not be diminished, but that rather it might grow. Lord, that we not stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. Help us, Lord, in this request that we have, that we be strong in faith and that we give glory to you in our patience. Come on all over the room. Would you stand to your feet this morning all over the room? I don't know what it is that you're praying about. I don't know what it is you're looking for God to, to deal in your life. But right now, bring it to the top of your heart and say, God, this thing, I wait upon you, Lord. Lord, I'm not in a hurry. I trust you. I trust your timing. I trust your knowledge. I trust your wisdom. And I just ask you, God, gird up the faith within me. Help me today not to cast away my confidence. Help me today to hold fast to my profession of faith. Come on, just reach out to the Lord right now, all over the room. Just reach out for that that you need from the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you. We thank you that you hear our prayers, Lord God, that you are faithful. You are faithful to your word. You will never fail to keep your word. Hallelujah. He hears our prayers because he loves you. Glory to God. He hears what you're praying in the nighttime when no one else hears. He knows what you're going through. He understands. Seek him with all your heart, with all your faith, and he will be found. He's a faithful God. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. We praise God. We, Again, we thank you for joining us here for, from all around the world. Thank you for joining us. Uh, a few quick announcements. We did plan on doing some um, photos this morning, but we had to delay that. And so we'll let you know when we can reschedule a time to do family photos. We're having a photographer come here and just for free uh, let you guys take some photos. So uh, we'll reschedule that. And once we know, we'll give you the time. We also have laity to laity service this week. 
Uh, that's Wednesday at 7 p.m. where members of the church minister to members of the church, laity to laity. So if you can come out and support that on Wednesday, that'll be great. And then Saturday is a special day where we're going to have a special uh, prayer set, and that'll start at 10 a.m. Starting Saturday, we're going to pray for uh, however long, an hour or two. You can just drop in, pray as long as you like. Um, you can just drop in for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever you like, and pray and head out or, or stay the whole time. Um, but we, we, we set aside a special time of prayer uh, starting Saturday at 10 a.m. So if you can come out, we appreciate that. Uh, there's a lot to pray for. And so we're just, again, trusting God by faith. He responds to faith. It's faith that pleases Him. Well, with that, we want to let you know God bless you. We love you, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>